my sister Sherry's here. She said, I want you to teach me about um, making kefir and making fermented vegetables. She said, but, you know, we'll just do what we can tonight. You know, I'll come back to learn the rest. And I was like, no, uh, it takes about five minutes. So I've already shown her how to flip the kefir, which I have a video on that, and I have lots of information on my blog, um, cultured with a K, cultured karaite with a K, uh, dot blogspot.com. And um, so what we're going to do now, we made poblano peppers just a few minutes ago. That took about three minutes. <laughs> and now we're going to do um, what, I, what is known in Texas, anyway, as escabeche. And escabeche is... Um, Carrots and onions and jalapeno rings and uh, fresh garlic. When I was a little girl, all the Mexican restaurants always put this on the table. And I'm not sure if it was fermented or not, but actually it doesn't, it doesn't get real soft, so I actually like this better. Your, your, the vegetables that you ferment are going to retain their fiber, which is, um, to me, makes them as good or, or better as raw because if they're going to retain uh, their, some of their firmness, they're not, maybe not quite as firm, but they're going to retain their fiber and their firmness. And fermentation uh, increases the vitamin content of food across the board and actually enhances it and increases it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my vegetables in the jar that I've already cut up. You can, with fermentation, you can ferment any vegetable you can think of. Now, if you were making sauerkraut with cabbage, one of the things you would want to do is pound that cabbage down to break it up, break up the fibers in the cabbage. Not that the fibers go away, you're just trying to break them up. And, um, and you're also wanting to create their own juice from the, from the cabbage, and you just use a little salt with the escabeche. Wow, I've got more than I, than I thought to. Shake it down a little bit. Oh my gosh. I'm making a big mess here. We'll, we'll give this to Sherry's chickens. We'll scoot that over. Oh, I want that garlic. Okay. So what we're doing is getting our vegetables in there and we just want to kind of shove them down because we want them to stay. We want all of our fermented vegetables to stay under the water while they're fermenting. Um, and that way, you're not going to get anything ugly on top. Sometimes you can get a white foam, spoon it off. Sometimes, actually, you can even get a, a, a scum skim on the top. Just spoon it off. The vegetables underneath are just fine. If your ferment doesn't work, you're going to know it. It, it, it is going to be so repugnant. And, I, and I've been fortunate so far. I've never had that happen. So don't worry about getting a bad ferment. Um, it's, it's just probably not going to happen. I'm going to use about two teaspoons of Himalayan salt in some filtered water. You don't want to use chlorinated water. Oops. You want to use good, fresh, filtered water. And if you can use water that's filtered um, to get the fluoride out, that's, that's even better. Um, we're, we just discovered a, a Berkey, and um, I have the, the website on my blog for Berkey, and it has fluoride filters. Now you don't want to fill this too full with water because what's going to happen is the as the as it ferments, it's going to bubble up and, it, and it's going to keep bubbling up. So you don't want it too full. Um, and I'm going to put some rocks in a plastic bag so that that's going to weigh my vegetables down and, and make sure that they stay un completely under the water. I need a couple more rocks. 